seeing as some of us have work to do. Be Quiet is proud to introduce their all new light mount and dark mount ultra silent mechanical keyboards. Optimized for an ultra quiet typing experience with factory lubricated silent linear or tactile switches and three separate layers of sound damping. Light mount features a full size keyboard with an aluminum media wheel and five macro keys for streamlined access, while dark mount provides a more modular keyboard with hot swappable numpad and media dock. Both feature sleek aesthetics, hot swappable switches, ARGB lighting, and a magnetic palm rest and are the perfect choice for those who demand comfort, customization, and silence. For more details, visit the sponsored link in the description below. Not gonna lie, if you haven't seen that video of us turning that into the uh, world's largest emulator, if you will, I guess, not really, but it's got 13,000 emulated games plus PC gaming on there. Uh, I'll put the link in that video down below. We've all been playing something on it. Oh, I've been playing like Punch Out quite a bit. Anyway, that's not about today's video. <laughs> I t it's just cool, it's fun. I still wanna set up like a retro 90s style room that you walk in there and it's like you went through a time portal. But that's not the point of today's video. Today's video is about bifurcation. And uh, it's just a fancy word for chopping up your PCI Express lanes. And when I did our video about understanding PCI Express lanes, the different generations and how they kind of get allocated to different components in your system, today we're gonna specifically talk about and demonstrate bifurcation, which is just a really fancy word for chopping up the lanes inside your PCI Express uh, slots so that you can have all of your devices, your, your devices, have all of your devices connected to your CPU uh, specifically. Bifurcation only has to do with the CPU all of the non-CPU direct lanes go through the PCH, you know, the chipset, and that gets handled separately. So today we're gonna talk about bifurcation specifically. We're gonna demonstrate what to know and understand. And I bet you some of you watching this video right now have your stuff configured quite incorrectly because you probably didn't read the freaking manual. Now this is unfortunately one of those scenarios where no matter what I show you with this board, your mileage is going to vary. You have to read the manual for your particular motherboard. They're all gonna be different. They're all gonna have different numbers of slots. They're all gonna have different uh, generations and such, depending on how old it is. This is a Z790 uh, MSI Carbon Wi-Fi 2. So that's specifically this board that we're talking about today. But as you can see, when, we come, when it comes to slots, we've only got one full-size 16X PCI Express uh, Gen 5 slot right here. This would obviously be for the graphics card. It's got the metal shield and stuff on there. You can kind of identify the full, we'll call them full fat, the full fat slots in your board because more often than not, they're gonna have this metal shielding on them. And it's, unless you're doing some sort of a WS or a workstation board, it's always gonna be the topmost 16X. Now don't get fooled in thinking that all 16X length slots are actually 16Xs, because this bottom one right here, although it is long enough for a full 16X slot, it's actually only an X4 slot for Gen 4 or, or below. So it's, it's quite misleading. So you could, for instance, fit, let's say an expansion card like this right here. This isn't actually from this board, even though it says MSI. I believe this is actually from a godlike. Um, this allows us to add two more M.2 drives. You can see right there, it's got two slots on there. And it even says right here, it's a M.2 Expander Z Gen 4. So it allows us to add two Gen 4 drives to our motherboard if we needed two more slots, right? But if you actually compare the pin length inside this slot versus the amount of pins that are on the actual PCB, this is an 8X. You can tell because it's quite honestly just dividing it up, right? So we've got 16x slot, it's only half of it, that's an 8x. If it were half of that, it'd be a 4x. This, if I were to slot this in right here, would not give me full 8x because each one of these drives right here would bifurcate this 8x into two 4x's. Now, unfortunately, because we only have a single 4x in this slot, the motherboard would then bifurcate this to two 2x's which would actually be terrible for Gen 4. And that's bifurcation in a nutshell. It's just taking your slots and it's taking the amount of lanes that you have and slicing them up based on the device's needs. Now, because each CPU has a different amount of lanes available to it, if you're running like a HEDT or a high-end desktop, like a, a Threadripper or something like that, you're gonna have like 64 lanes or you have lots of lanes. It probably won't matter. You could actually, it wouldn't even have to bifurcate for the most part. Uh, but if you're running a mainstream CPU, like Intel Core Ultra, 14900K, 13900K, or AMD Ryzen CPUs, you're gonna have a significantly less amount of lanes available to the devices that you're plugging in. Now, NVMe, it doesn't matter if you're talking about NVMe, expansion cards like this, network cards, Wi-Fi cards, all of those have to communicate with the CPU in some way. So those are gonna take up lanes. And as you start to plug in more things, those lanes have to be chopped up. So let's say we were gonna install a Gen 4 drive, a Gen 5 drive, 
And let's pretend this is a graphics card. A graphics card in a Ryzen CPU, no bifurcation would happen by doing this scenario. Is, and you wanna make sure though you're putting them in the correct slots. This is one of those, unfortunately, you definitely have to read your manual because there are some things even about this board that are a little backwards. And you might have actually plugged some stuff into the wrong slots and have messed up some of the speeds available to your NVMe drives if you didn't read the manual. Um, but let's say this was an Intel setup. If we did this very same thing, Intel only has 20 lanes available to the uh, i9 G uh, CPUs like the 14900K and such, where you could get you know 16X available directly to the GPU, but it only has four lanes of Gen 4 available for the NVMe and then all the other NVMEs would have to go through the chipset. The nuances of this board, and this is why by understanding your motherboard and reading the manual is so important. By instinct, we tend to want to take, let's see, this is my SSD drive. Uh, this is my drive that has the OS on it right here, Crucial T700 Gen 5 drive. You typically would be like, oh, I'm gonna put it in the topmost slot. And this is difficult to do from this angle. And you'd be like, cool, installed. The way this board is laid out, that top slot is actually a Gen 4 slot direct to CPU. And then this slot right here, this longer slot right above the first full uh, length XTNX or 16X slot, that's the Gen 5 NVMe. So if we were to take our Gen 5 drive and put it up here at the top, well, now we're only running at Gen 4 speeds, which is quite honestly half of the total bandwidth available to an NVMe that's a Gen 5 drive. Like Gen 5 drives are usually anywhere between 11 to 15,000 megabytes read in like 10 to 12,000 megabytes per second write. But if you drop this down to a Gen 4, it's effectively half that at about 7,500 and 6,500 respectively for read write. So why pay for a Gen 5 drive if you're going to be putting it in the wrong slot or your board doesn't even support Gen 5 drives? You could save money by making sure you understand your motherboard. Also too, if you bought this motherboard and we bought multiple Gen 5 drives, well, that's a waste of money because only one of them in this particular instance is gonna be able to even run at Gen 5. And by doing so, if we took this and put it right here, Right, this is the correct slot, and I can never get on that freaking. So let's say I put it in the Gen 5 slot. Now our graphics card is only going to run a PCIe Gen 5 by 8, not by 16. Now, fortunately, there's been a lot of independent testing done. Uh, we've done our own. I know Gamers Nexus has done it. I know Hardware Unboxed has done it. I know Hardware Canucks has done it. All the hardwares, they've all done it and shown that even with a 5090 graphics card, depending on the resolution and the settings that you're playing at, it's very unlikely you're going to notice a performance difference. It would show up in benchmarks designed to really pull out the single percent differences in performance, but you would never notice that. Let's go ahead and do some demonstrations here. If I take this out now, right, and I put my Gen 4 drive and put it right here, it's still only gonna run at Gen 4 speeds, but I'm not entirely too sure what's gonna happen to our graphics card. So I'm gonna go ahead right now and fire this up in the correct configuration so we can show you the befores and afters. So a Gen 4 drive should go in the Gen 4 slot. These are both direct to CPU. This is a 14900K, cool. So our Gen 4 drive is now in the Gen 4 slot. Now we're gonna go ahead and plug in our 5080, which is a Gen 5 by 16 device. Fire it up. And we're gonna be using hardware info to actually take a look at what our speeds are at because if you load the full suite of hardware info and not just the sensors only, you can actually see what your stuff is running at. Now my T500 drive that I just installed in the Gen 5 or the Gen 4 slot doesn't have an OS on it. Our T700 does. I wanna point out this is down here in the chipset slots. So that, that slot, this slot, and this slot will not affect bifurcation for the GPU and the NVMEs and such because these are not direct to CPU lanes. They're going through the chipset. So I just want to point that out for the eagle eye that'll be like, wait, your T700's installed. That's going to affect the, no, it's not. I'm going to open up GPU Z because it's a quick and easy way to check the lanes on the GPU. It's always good to have this installed. You can do many things with it. And there it is right there, PCIe X16 5.0. That's the device's capability. It's running at 16. So we can hit the, the question mark and then you can even start a render test. And then there it is right there. See, now it jumped up to 5.0. So if you see it running at some funky number, that's just because of the fact that when it's sitting there idle, the bus speed can and does change and it affects the generation effective uh, anyway, it's just doing math to kind of determine what that is. Now we can open up Hardware Info 64. Typically we use sensors only when we're doing logging, but you want to use full mode and then hit start. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to where it says drives. We're gonna drop that down. We're gonna drop down our NVMe. So you can see right here on the top, we have the CT, which is the crucial technology. It's 2000s, the uh, capacity of the drive, 2000 megabytes. We've got T500, T500, and then SSD 
8, right? And then CT for Crucial Technologies, 2000 megabytes T700 SSD. So our top, the T500, PCIe X4, 16 giga transfers per second. Now, it doesn't technically say the generation it is, but if you actually understand the giga transfer speeds, 16 is Gen 4. So as you can see, our T700 right here, which is in our chipset, clearly it's a Gen 5 drive. It's capable of PCIe Gen 5 X4 at 32 giga transfers a second, but because we're only in the chipset, we're only getting 16. So this is another example of how you can waste money by buying fast drives. I see people do this. I've seen people go like, and they're like, check out my specs. And they're like, I've got four Gen 5 drives. And it's like, everyone, I see so many people in the comments. Wow, that's so much speed. Wow, that's so cool. And it's like, Wow, you don't understand anything about the way bifurcation and PCIe lanes work because you just threw easily two of those drives worth of money down the drain because you're not getting the performance of those drives. So this is something now that we're seeing uh, kind of fall behind where drives are becoming less expensive, boards are supporting more of them, and people are not understanding how the bifurcation works. Now anyway, technically this is not bifurcating at all because everything is being full bus with designated to their product or to the to the devices. Now we'll go ahead and cause a bifurcation situation right here. Actually, before I do that, there's one other thing I want to do. I want to throw my Gen 4 device into the Gen 5 NVMe slot, and I want to see whether or not the graphics card drops down to Gen 4 or if it can bifurcate Gen 4 and Gen 5 independently when those lanes split. We suspect it's going to bifurcate Gen 5 and Gen 4, but we need to actually test it. We haven't done that yet. So now my Gen 4 drive is going into my Gen 5 slot. So I didn't do anything. I didn't change the configuration at all of the components. Like the components are the same ones. I just moved where they are. Actually, I moved one item where it was. All right, here we go. It is currently at, it is Gen 5 by 8. It's Gen 5 by 8, which we knew was gonna happen because now that we have a drive occupying the same lane structure to the CPU, the drive should be running at Gen 4 by 4. So if that's the case, we now have four lanes doing nothing. They're wasted, they're lost. They got bifurcated into oblivion, essentially. Literally, we gained nothing by putting that NVMe in the Gen 5 slot, but what we took away was eight lanes to our GPU and four of them are now just poofed and doing nothing. Because remember, bifurcate, by means two. If you cut eight into half, four are used by the NVMe, the other four just go nowhere. They can't get reassigned to the GPU because the GPU also only works in factors of eight. So right now we just caused ourselves a, uh, an issue here for no reason at all. Okay, this would now be ideal. That's the Gen 4, it's got a Gen 4 drive. That's the Gen 5, it's got a Gen 5 drive. This is the uh, Gen 5 graphics card, which will bifurcate down to a Gen uh, 5x8, because we need to have four available to here. So we're still gonna have four lanes doing nothing, because eight plus four is 12, not 16. And then chipset, chipset, chipset. Now it's important to note, I have not touched bifurcation in the BIOS. I don't think you should go in and touch bifurcation in the BIOS, because here's the thing. If you go to the BIOS and you see the bifurcation options, you might see an option that says 8X comma 8X. You might see 16X comma 4X. You might see 4X comma 4X comma 4X comma 4X. And that is just forcing those slots to go into certain bifurcation modes, regardless of what devices are on there. You could easily make it so devices don't work at all because you might have bifurcated lanes right away from something. Now all, all motherboards are different, so I can only speak to this board right here but it's better to just leave it on auto because auto during the post procedure will automatically identify all the devices and bifurcate automatically when you stick in a new drive, et cetera. So I don't think there's any real reason standard average users should go into messing with the bifurcation options in the BIOS. That's why I didn't even show it. You shouldn't touch it. In fact, a lot of BIOSes don't even expose it. So our graphics card is at 8X Gen 5. So our T700 should now be 32. Yes, our T700 is now at 32 giga transfers. So that is Gen 5 by 4. T500, these should all be now 16. So although this was kind of a roughish video, I think you guys get the idea now. Check your motherboard manual and then get a piece of paper. It might be easier than trying to follow this all in your head, but write down your devices, say Gen 4, Gen 3, whatever. Doesn't even matter. Like all SSDs are gonna be X4. All your graphics cards are gonna be X16, okay? And then read your manual. It'll tell you which slots go where. So now to test what happens uh, with that Gen 5 lane 16X slot, we put a 4090 in there, which is a Gen 4 by 16 device. So Phil and I honestly don't know. Is it gonna be Gen 4 by 8? 
or Gen 4 by 16. Or, because lanes are physical lanes, right? The generation doesn't denote how many lanes you get, it denotes the speed of those lanes. Oh yeah, Gen 4 by 8, look at that. So now this is a real world scenario where you've potentially actually so this is now effectively running at PCIe Gen 3 by 16 speed. So yeah, that's not, that's not ideal. <laughs> so this is one of those scenarios where the only way I could get that back to 16X, even at Gen 4, is by removing an NVMe. This is where you have to ask yourself, which is more important to you, having your GPU run as fast as possible or having your drives run as fast as possible or having as much capacity of your drives as possible. Those are like the three scenarios. Now here's where AMD is great in that Ryzen 7000 and 9000 series actually gives you 24 lanes of Gen 5. This is where the motherboard manufacturer's responsibility is to allocate those lanes in the generation. So the Tai Chi is really stupid in the fact that it gives us one NVMe Gen 5 by four it gives us our Gen 5 by 16 to the GPU, and that those other four direct to CPU lanes uh, are just lost. They don't, like if you look at this block chart, they're not even mapped to the CPU at all. Everything else goes through the chipset. Now, if we take a look at the ASUS X870E Gaming E, uh, it's totally different. So ASUS actually gives us a third NVMe slot. So we have three Gen 5 by four NVMe slots, and technically a 16X Gen 5. Now you don't bifurcate the 16X as long as you don't populate two Gen 5 N NVMEs in there. So already you can see the ASUS board is already better than the Tai Chi board because you get three direct to CPU connections for the NVMEs. So this is like the third time I'm saying this at least. It's very important to check your motherboard uh, manual because this should be charted and mentioned in your manual so you make sure you're not accidentally putting things in the wrong slots uh, or even understanding where those slots are connected because it's not standardized. There you go. I know someone right now is having an aha moment and you're realizing like, man, just moving some drives around might be all it takes. For some of you, it might be consolidating some of those smaller drives into one bigger drive and then freeing up the connection, which leads you to go, man, why are all those connections even there if they, if they, can't, you know, if they, if they can't all run at their full speeds? Well, that's a question for Intel and AMD.